Hi, and welcome to Total Training for Photoshop CS4 Essentials. I'm your host, Jeff Blake, an artist and designer and author and video presenter, but most importantly, I'm a user much like yourself. And I'm here to show you all the amazing things that are possible inside Photoshop. So in our first chapter, we'll take a tour of the Photoshop interface. I'll show you how to do some customization, how to get around inside Photoshop. And we'll also take a tour of some of the new features inside Photoshop CS4. So let's get started. All right, so I hope you are ready for some Photoshop here. Now, I want to start things off with a tour of our interface. Now, if you have Photoshop launched in front of you, there's not a whole lot to see until you get an image open. So here's what I'd like you to do. Go into the Project Files folder that you've copied onto your computer. Go into the Chapter 1 folder, and inside the Chapter 1 folder, you will find a file called gettingstarted.jpg. Go ahead and open it up. Choose File, Open, and go and grab it. That's this image here. So with an image open inside Photoshop, our tour of the interface is going to be a heck of a lot more fun. So we're going to get started here with our tour of the interface. What better place to start in Photoshop than the toolbox, which you will find way over on the left-hand side of your screen, this tall, narrow column of tools. Now, if you're brand new to Photoshop, if you've never really messed around inside Photoshop before, this can be a little bit overwhelming. There's so many tools here inside Photoshop. Where do you even begin? There's so much to see. Well, here's a neat way to kind of get yourself warmed up to Photoshop. If you choose to, you can hover your mouse over top of these tools and you'll get what we call a tool tip, a little message that tells you the name of the tool. So I have my lasso tool here. I have my quick selection tool, the crop tool, and so on. So you might want to spend a little bit of time just kind of hovering over top of some of the tools and getting used to what's what. Now, some of the tools have a tiny black arrow in the bottom right hand corner. That means that if you click and hold with your mouse, you're going to get a tool flyout. So there's actually more tools inside the toolbox than you can see right off the bat. So again, just click and hold and you'll get this flyout here. Lots and lots to see inside this toolbox. Lots and lots of stuff. Now let me show you a couple of cool things here. I'll use my marquee tools here right up towards the top of the toolbox. In fact, I'm going to use the first two marquee tools. We'll be talking about these tools in an upcoming chapter, but you can see here underneath the flyout, the letter M. What is that all about? Well, check this out. If I hover my mouse over top of the tool again, I also see the letter M at the end of the tool tip. What that is, is it's a single keystroke equivalent, a keyboard shortcut to get to that tool. It's pretty cool stuff. So check this out. I'm going to go back to the very first tool, the move tool, this black arrow tool here. And if I hit the M key on my keyboard, I'm just hitting M. I'm not holding down shift or anything like that. Just M on its own. That switches me to that tool. Now, most of the tools inside the toolbox have a single keystroke equivalent to make it faster to access them. For example, L for the lasso tool, C for the crop tool, I for the eyedropper tool, B for the brush tool. There's tons and tons of them. I don't know them all. I got to stress this. I don't know them all, but I do know the ones that I use most often, right? H for hand, Z for zoom, P for the pen tool, V for the move tool, that's a pretty important one. So as you use Photoshop more and more, you'll get used to these keystroke equivalents and you'll move a lot faster inside the program. But don't get overwhelmed trying to memorize them all right off the bat. Focus on just learning the software first. But again, if you want to speed things up a little bit, you can start working a lot faster. Now here's something else I want to show you. I'm going to use my lasso tool as an example. If I click and hold on the lasso tool, I get obviously this flyout here. There's some additional tools that I have there. Now check this out. I'm going to go back to my move tool. I'm just going to hit the V key on my keyboard. Now I want to access the lasso tool, but I want to also access some of those tools that are hidden underneath the lasso tool. So I'm going to hit the L key on my keyboard to access the lasso tool. Now check this out. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to hit L again. That accesses the second lasso tool, which is called the polygonal lasso tool. Hit L again, I get the magnetic lasso tool. L one more time. By the way, I'm holding down shift the whole time here. This is shift and L, all this. Back to the freehand, shift L again. I'm just cycling through here. Let go of shift and I can go about my work inside Photoshop. Let me show you that one more time. I'll use the eyedropper group of tools. I'm going to hit the I key all by itself. That switches me to the eyedropper. Hold down shift. Hit I again, Shift I again, 
ruler tool, shift I again, note tool, shift I again, count tool, shift I again, back to the eyedropper tool. So all I'm doing as I'm holding down shift is I'm just cycling through all these tools. It's a pretty cool trick inside Photoshop. But here's something even cooler. I can hold down the Alt key here on the Windows side or Option on the Mac, and I can actually cycle through the tools inside these little flyouts just by holding down Alt or Option. I'll show you that with my Marquee tool as well. I'm holding down Alt here on the Windows side, single clicking, cycling through those tools. It's a nice fast way to get through your tools inside Photoshop. I should mention a couple of other quick things here. Way down at the bottom of the toolbox, I have the color area here. I'm going to hit the D key on my keyboard, which is a keystroke shortcut for getting me back to the defaults, which is black for the foreground color here in the top left corner, and white as my background color here in the bottom right corner. So we'll talk more about working with color and painting it again in an upcoming chapter, but just know that this is your color area here down at the bottom of the toolbox. One final thing I want to mention about the toolbox. If you've worked with previous versions of Photoshop, you may remember the toolbox looking a little bit different. In the previous version of Photoshop, they came up with this single column toolbox here. But if I move my mouse way up to the top here and single click on this white arrow here, I get the double column. This is like the traditional Photoshop toolbox that you may be used to. So it's completely up to you. Just single click actually anywhere along this gray bar up at the top here, and that'll flip you between the two toolbox modes. So it's really up to you. Admittedly, I found the single column a little jarring at first, but now I'm completely used to it. it gives me lots more space to work with on screen. So there you go.